So I was watching a uh, true crime whatever, as I do, and I see a girl that I've never watched before on YouTube. The video that came up on my feed said, girl melted into couch by parents. And I was like, what the fuck? That sounds like the absolute, like most bizarre, what, what how, how, who, what, where, fire, plastic, melt, like how does that work? So I clicked on it and it was so much worse. What I heard was not, what I expected, it made me really angry. As I kept listening, it just became so much more twisted. It makes me so f mad that people do this, that people are comfortable with this. Shit like this happens all the time. The mistreatment of disabled people kills disabled people all the time. And that is something that I wanna talk about. I'm going to share this with you and it's not nice or fun or happy, it's awful, it's the worst thing ever. I cannot imagine the pain that Lacey went through for years. I'm not gonna show pictures, like I'll show you a few that aren't off, like graphic or of the crime scene or anything like that. And anyone who's watching this that is related to someone who is disabled, which all of us are probably, because we probably have elderly grandparents somewhere. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this, please. Obviously you guys are probably cool and are not like being awful to your kids and stuff, but there could be one or two people out there and they're probably not even awful people. They're probably just misguided and, mm, or maybe they're awful, but maybe maybe they're just misguided and, and burnt out and have no idea what to do and dissociating and whatever. I have no idea. What I do know is life is complex and hard and nuanced. And today we're gonna go over how Lacey died at the hands of her parents. How her parents neglected her and watched as she rotted and melted into their living room couch for 12 years. Before I say things, listen, this is an awkward time and an awkward place for this. There's no good place in this video to put this. True crime channels that like do true tr crime stuff have sponsors all the time and like do a sponsorship at the beginning and then continue with their thing. But like, I'm not a, a true crime channel. <laughs> so I feel like it, that just feels so weird. This is so dark and deep. However, this is the video that I wanna make right now. This is what is speaking to me right now that I really wanna talk about and really needs to be said. Uh, the sponsor doesn't have a choice really. You know, the sponsor had nothing to do with the kind of video that this is. They just chose me, which I'm very thankful for and I'm very thankful that they are keeping my lights on. <laughs> it's a big thank you to everyone who watches this and watches these ads. And it's an app that I actually really like and it's really fun. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, I'm going to give a sponsorship spiel right now, okay? It's called Love and Pies. Thank you, Love and Pies, for sponsoring today's video. Love and Pies is a free to play merge two game that you can get on your phone or tablet. But the story revolves around a recent divorcee named Amelia Green. The whole time has like a kid wearing a dinosaur costume, which is just the cutest thing. And then she goes in the countryside to live with her mom at their old cafe, but it burned down. So she's got to rebuild it. So most of the game is connecting different ingredients together that are the same and making a new ingredient or like a new product, a new thing. You play the game, you connect all of the different ingredients, which then you use to build a thriving cafe. Combine resources into baked goods, serve your customers, and renovate the cafe with a diverse cast of characters. Not only that though, there's also some tea in this game. There's some, there's some small town mystery going on here. Amelia discovers some dark family secrets along the way, so it's very dramatic. If a game can keep my interest, then it's a good game. The only reason why I stopped playing Love and Pies is because I run out of energy. Then I have to wait for more energy to load back or buy more. It's addicting, it's so fun. Every time you combine the same thing, it levels up. Like there are 12 different levels of coffee. What's level 12 coffee look like? I don't know, I need to know. They just introduced like cats to the thing. So now I'm like making cats, I guess soon. I need to know what that's about. This is what my cafe looks like right now. Mm, I love it, it's so cute. You'll never get bored of this game. There's new story content that's updated regularly. The customizing and decorating options are endless. You can check out new and exciting challenges that are constantly being updated. Love and Pies is just over a year old and they already have four and a half million downloads worldwide. Go check out what the big deal is down below for yourself. The link is down below in the description. You can go download Love and Pies by clicking it. Thank you to Love and Pies by Trail Mix for sponsoring today's video. We will return now. Side note, does anyone else feel like I really need a tattoo up here? because I feel like I do. Thank you to all of you guys for watching. So anyway, thank you Love and Pies, but now let's keep going. Let's keep going, let's get started. I need to introduce you to Lacey. Lacey Ellen Fletcher was born November 25th, 1985. Lacey lived with her parents, Sheila and Clay. And they lived in a town in Louisiana called Slaughter. Slaughter. 
What the fuck? And the fact that this happened in Slaughter, Louisiana can suck a dick. <laughs> Slaughter, Louisiana is near Baton Rouge, which is where Clay, Lacey's dad, apparently worked. We don't really know what he did for a job job. It seems like his job was working for a nonprofit in Baton Rouge. The nonprofit being <laughs> the Baton Rouge Civil War Round Table, which its mission statement is to educate and foster an appreciation for the sacrifices made by all during the Civil War. I don't know what that means. And that's all I know about Clay. Sheila, she was a deputy clerk for a while. So, you know, normal people, church going people, you know? They only had Lacey, their only kid, and they lived on a place um, on a road called Tom Drive. It was a small, cute little like bungalow house on a couple of acres, like just a regular house, kind of reminds me of my house growing up. So living at the same house since 1995, and here we are, 2022 is where this case takes place. One of their neighbors was a boy named Robert, who was a year older than Lacey, so they went to the same school and kind of like knew each other and hung out sometimes. Lacey, as a kid, went to school and stuff, and she was described by others and by Robert as just not like the other kids. She saw things differently. She didn't seem as mature as the other kids. She wasn't interested in as adult things as the other kids. For example, as a teenager, she would invite them to come over and watch Disney movies. That was when she was like 17. Friends at school described her as the sweetest, kindest person you could ever meet. She didn't have a bad bone in her body. She was more shy and soft-spoken but she was very vocal with her opinions. When Lacey came into high school, into grade nine, when she was around 14-ish, that was when her autism accelerated. Now I'm using air quotes because obviously that's not how autism works. And because this is not uncommon, the exact same thing happened to me at the exact same time. Grade nine or going into high school and being 14 and being in puberty and stuff is so hard <laughs> when you're autistic. It's hard for everyone. It's hard for any. Being a kid and a teenager and a preteen is difficult for everybody. Uh, when you're autistic, like that was when I was at my worst, my lowest. That was when my autism was at its peak, if you will. Not, and it wasn't that my autism was at its peak. It was that I was the most upset. <laughs> and so everything that makes me a distressed autistic person was visible. So anyway, this happened to Lacey at around 14. And so her parents pulled her from school and began homeschooling her. So now she's home being homeschooled. She still has friends, like she still talks to the neighbor kids and stuff. The last time that anyone other than Lacey's parents saw her out of that house was when she was 21 years old. Her being 21, 21 is like 2006. And this case takes place in 2022. So her last known sighting by neighbors, she was running down the road and she had like little weights in her hands and she was jogging. And that was something that she did. After that, everyone just assumed that Lacey like went away, went off to college or went and did life and got a house and a wife and got married or something. Like who like did life like adult children did. And Clay and Sheila kind of made it seem like that was the truth. People were like, how's Lacey? They're like, she's great. Yeah, fine. Awesome. Good. Switch the subject. Like, where's Lacey these days? Oh, she's off doing great stuff. Is she? Interesting. No one had any clue. Lacey hadn't left at all. That was actually like, she, she had not left. She had not moved up, she had not moved. And then on January 3rd, Sheila, Lacey's mom, called 911 to report that Lacey wasn't breathing and that she was unresponsive. And soon people came, police, Ambalam, probably not because she was not alive. And uh, we enter the scene. Now I'm, I'm gonna warn you. I don't even know what kind of like trigger warnings to say. It's just so painful and so gross. I hate to say that, but I don't know if there's any other word. Like that's how you're gonna feel. You're gonna feel like, what the fuck? Oh my God. Uh, yeah, so anyway, let's go into it. The police officers, whatever, they've got GoPros on. So they've got all of this on film. So officers come in instantly. They were hit with a smell and it hit them so much you couldn't even breathe through your mouth. You were eating it. The smell had like a texture. And these men had like smelled death before and rotting bodies and stuff. And they said it was worse than that. It was the worst smell that they'd ever smelled ever in their lives. They couldn't eat for a week. And they didn't have to take too many steps to find in the living room, the crime scene. There Lacey is in the living room, sitting on the couch. So Lacey was found kind of slumped over to her left side with her eyes open, her mouth open, obviously, deceased. She was wearing nothing except a light blue t-shirt, which was pulled up 
like above her boobs. Like it what it literally was just like on a shirt and that's all she was wearing. She was sitting like crisscross applesauce on the couch. Uh, this couch, the living room couch faced the TV. Sheila had like her chair next to where Lacey's couch was. The couch though, wasn't even a couch. There was an, hmm, the couch, it, the couch was a crater. The couch was like a mushy piece of whatever that had just formed around Lacey as she sat there for 12 years and didn't move ever. She was sunk 18 inches deep into this couch. She was up to her armpits. She like b was buried. The couch and Lacey were coated with feces and urine, just caked. There was feces in her hair and her nostrils. The couch was absolutely like coated in layers and layers and layers. And it was so wet. Mm. Clearly you could tell that Lacey had just been going to the bathroom right there. The wood floors were actually buckling underneath the couch because of how rotted the underneath was like, it was all just a rotted wet mess. It was like a cesspit. She was sitting in a latrine. She just sat in like her own waist and ate through herself and the couch. Lacey was immediately pronounced dead at the scene. They did not need to go much further. Uh, Cause this is also how she was found. Lacey was 96 pounds when they found her. Lacey at the age of 36 years old was 96 pounds and she had COVID which she totally didn't get herself. She had pieces of couch and her own feces found inside of her stomach. She was sitting crisscross applesauce, right? And after the years of just going to the bathroom and sitting there, her waist and just like, just from sitting there, ate through her skin all under her legs. Her whole bum to her ankles on her legs, there was no flesh. It was just an ulcer right to the bone. Her skin and her flesh melted off. When they like removed her from the couch, anything that they saw was just like, blackened like you th they said they couldn't even tell that her legs were part of a human body not only that but she was rotting she had open wounds everywhere and sores everywhere that were actively being eaten by insects on the couch of her own home with her where, her, where she lives with her parents they were infested with maggots and gnats so her official cause of death was rated as like a bunch of things. First of all, severe medical neglect, thank you, led to chronic malnutrition, acute starvation. Which I don't know what their definition of acute is. Like acute usually means um, in this case that like, you know, a small amount of time. I don't know what they mean by acute. Immobility, acute ulcer formation. I don't know what. Uh, and osteomyelitis, which is a, an infection of the bones, which then led to sepsis, then led to death. And she also had COVID. No one from this case had seen anything like that. The coroner couldn't eat for a week and he determined that there's no way that she sat there for any less than 12 years. Meaning that Lacey had sat there since she was at least 24 years old. Just sat on the couch and didn't, get up. Somewhere between the ages of 21 and 24, she just sat on the couch and didn't get up. So Lacey's parents are like, yeah, Lacey has locked in syndrome, which locked in syndrome is a real syndrome, but it, it happens because of actual physical damage to your nervous system. So locked in syndrome, you lose like all ability to voluntarily operate your muscles that can move, except for your eyes. You can move your eyes around. So what makes it so you literally, you can't move your muscles? Spinal cord injury, like an injury of the pons in your brain, which didn't happen to Lacey. <laughs> like you don't just like get locked in syndrome and you're like, I can't move. Something has to happen. Lacey was not diagnosed with locked in syndrome. She was diagnosed with uh, two disorders at this time. The only two disorders that she was ever diagnosed with, autism spectrum disorder and also social anxiety. The coroner was like, I've never even heard of that. But I mean, it, it is a thing, but especially it's usually a thing for like people that suffer with a stroke, some kind of brain injury or like you got into an accident or something. But I wanna cut that right out right now and say that if she had locked in syndrome, uh, you are then admitting that you force fed your daughter her own feces soaked couch that she sat on because there was feces and couch in her stomach. So which one is it, Brenda? Right. At 36 years old, no one had seen from her in over 12 years and knew that she was just in that house the whole time rotting. Rotting away while her mom sat right next to her. There was like the whole rest of the house was clean, folded laundry right next there. In front of Lacey, there was like a table with wet wipes 
on it, lotion. It looks like there were movies for kids. They hung out in that living room. Lacey was in front of them every day. Sheila and Clay get under arrest and questioned because they're like, what the fuck? You obviously like killed your daughter. And they were like, Lacey was of complete sound mind and can make her own decisions. And actually like even last night she was up, she was making her own decisions. Really? Yeah? No. Yeah, so we're just gonna, we're gonna cut that excuse right there. Cause obviously no. Obviously shut up Sheila and Clay. Obviously no person is, who is of sound mind sits down for 12 years and rots and burns their skin off to the bone with their own urine. Except she never even complained of her sores. She we never, she never, I even, I cleaned them. How did you clean your daughter's sores? How? How'd you, how'd you clean her sores? I wanna know. Did you sit on the couch? Did you sit to do it? Did you change your clothes? Did you have to, like, did you put on any protective gear? Did you wear gloves? Did you wear a hairnet, put your hair up? What'd you do with, like, did you have to, like, pick her up? Did you just kind of, like, push her over? Describe to me how that process worked. How you cleaned your daughter's wounds. Describe to me how frequently that was. She was like, I cleaned them, I cleaned them. Did you get your daughter's feces all over you? What'd you do after that? Did you wear like a garbage bag to cover yourself? Did you sit there? Did you put a towel down? Did you just use a wet wipe, wipe her down, push her to one side? Then did you get up on the other side, push her to the other side? And just like, tell me about that. I would like to viscerally know that experience. I would like everyone to viscerally know that experience. It didn't happen. And if it did, you're a monster and you're a half-ass parent. Like what? I cleaned them. Yeah, there's maggots in them. Shut up. She was a sound mind and body, but couldn't clean her wounds herself. She was a sound mind and body, but, but she was peeing and pooping on herself and y'all let it happen? What the f Listen, there is a record of Clay and Sheila going to Lacey's doctor without Lacey. So in 2010, she'd be 24, turning 25. About the year where they estimate that she started sitting on the couch, Clay and Sheila went to the doctor for advice because they claimed that Lacey didn't want to get up from the couch. She just, she didn't want to move. She didn't want to get up or talk or do anything. She wanted to go to the bathroom on the couch and they were like, what do we do? Uh, presumably they got no helpful advice. And it seems like they didn't try again. It seems like that was like, all right, swanger. See, they tried, they tried, they were exhausted and they gave up. Okay, to that I say, okay, if that's how you feel, still not good enough. Still not good enough and I don't care. Is that, is that okay? Can we agree with that? They said that she would only go to the bathroom on the couch and they just like would give her a towel. She'd go to the bathroom and they'd take the towel away and wash it. Which there's a towel on the couch and in the photo. <laughs> it's like the least covered in, in human waste out of the whole couch. Like just shut up. Ugh, I fucking... Ugh. This case is ongoing. The fate of Clay and Sheila has not been decided or determined in a court of law. They were charged with second degree murder, both of them, but they were both released on bail. They didn't stay at the jail for more than 24 hours. Clay, I think, actually stayed for like maybe 30 hours or something. And they're just waiting for trial. It was supposed to be like a, a trial uh, at the beginning of February, which then got pushed back to June. And that's just gonna be like the one trial for the first bit. Like, I don't know how all that trial shit works, but there's gotta be a bunch. Cause they pled, so they've already pled not guilty. Not guilty, your honor. Did not second degree murder my kid. In Louisiana, second degree murder is life in prison. I understand why they're doing second degree and not first degree in regard to the evidence. I would love it if these people were put under for fucking first degree murder. Cause you're telling me that they did not want their child dead. You're telling me that they did they were, they were did not want to kill their child. So uh, yeah, now we're waiting. What the f happened? I don't know what happened. Obviously I wasn't there. But here, here's what I, here's my thing. Upon hearing this and upon hearing that for 12 years they starved and let like watch their daughter rot, why did they call 911 when she died? They found that she died at least 24 to 48 hours before the phone call was made, which I also find weird considering that it was New Year's, you know? It was early in the morning on January 3rd, so it was like January 2nd night, and Lacey died like at New Year's, what ha you know? I'm like, why did they call? Are they that dumb to not think that officers would be like, you're neglecting your kid, <laughs> what the f what stopped them from just like burying Lacey in the backyard? Like, why'd they call 911? Well, reports say that a neighbor saw Lacey through the window and saw that she was unresponsive and not breathing and was like, you need to call 911. And apparently Sheila's like, uh, oh, she's fine, oh, she's, she's good. Louisiana is a mandatory reporting state, which means that if you witness 
like a murder or a crime, stuff like that, you see that shit, if you don't tell people, you're in trouble too, bro. And so that neighbor was like, you call them or I will. I see that your daughter is not breathing right now. What the fuck? I was like, they let someone in their home? Well, apparently it was outside the window. That's another thing. If you're friends with friggin' Clay and Sheila Fletcher, pillars of the community, and you're, they're always going to your house and you haven't been over to their house in 15 years, why? Mary, go over to your friends' houses. Check up on the hidden staircases and the bookshelves. The other thing, like what the f happened to Lacey? As an autistic person, I can't say what Lacey went through or what made her do that or what made that feel like the right move, the right ideas. I don't know what happened. But as an autistic person, I do have a couple of, I do have a couple of theories. I don't mean for any of these to be harmful. I only mean for them to be helpful and insightful and show some kind of perspective, maybe. But uh, this is fucking weird. No person, like no, no human person, no autistic human person just like decides to do this in sound mind. Something happened to Lacey. So listen, they didn't find that she was restrained or anything, but I am saying if you were restrained on a couch for, you know, three years, you wouldn't be able to move. You wouldn't need to be restrained for the next nine. You know, your legs don't work. She couldn't move, but she was paralyzed from the ulcers and everything. So at some point, she was already immobile, so they wouldn't need to restrain her anyway. If that were a thing. If not, if Lacey just decided to sit on the couch one day in her mid twenties, I don't care, get up. There have been times where I have been, I get burnt out and dead and I've sat in one place for a day. Sometimes life is tough and you need, that's the only thing you can do is shut down like that. If my parents fucking let me, I can be depressed and in those places. And if my mom saw me like that, she would, pull me up and like drag me out of the house by like, and if she saw that I was like going to the bathroom myself, if my mom saw that I had like welts, it's like my mom would put me in a hospital. My mom, like my mom would, ha would well, let's get some nurses up in this bitch. What are you doing? Like, let's figure you out. No pair, two, two parents watched her and lived with her every day and let this happen. Why? Why didn't they try harder? Why didn't they do anything? Why didn't they say anything? When I look at their faces right now, like Clay and Sheila, they just look dead. They just look dead, zombie, dead. Freaks me out. What happened? I mean, we'll find out more on this case as it continues. This case is f it makes me so mad. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe the freaking pain that Lacey went through. Her own parents. I can't imagine the pain that she went through to being in so much pain and having her parents just watch her. And I hope that Clay and Sheila get absolutely dicked because that they are they suck so bad. Awful parents. What the fuck? Ah. Anyway, guys, thanks for being here. I'm sorry this was a dark one. Thank you, Love and Pius, for sponsoring this video. It might get demonetized on YouTube, so I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Ovs. Ovs, love you the mostest. Okay, bye. Gotta go, bye. Gotta go, bye. This is the end of the video song. This video is to tell you the video's done. If you're hearing this, it's because the video's done. Go watch another one. Boop, boop. Have a good day. Love you so much. Bye.